have another Marvel series, another Marvel mini series, I guess you could say, that came out not too long ago. Moon Knight. I thought Moon Knight would have been, you know, interesting to watch, so I gave it a look. Let me go through this, the, 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 this, the series, and the best way to do this is episode by episode. Now, don't, no, no, no need to turn off the, 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 the review or anything. I'm, I'm not going to be that long because it doesn't take long to go through this at all. It really doesn't take long to go through this at all. I'm just going to touch on a few things that are of importance. So, and it's only six episodes, so it wouldn't take that long. So here goes. Now, the first thing about Moon Knight, I will say, in episode one, I was interested in Stephen Grant. Right? I, I was interested in Stephen Grant. I think that the, 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 the way Oscar Isaac portrayed this character was, was really interesting. And Stephen was an interesting character. He was a little, he was a little nerdy, but also kind of flighty and fledgy. And he had this whole, um, you know, he had this sleep disorder thing that he talked about where he, he wonders and he doesn't know what's going on and all this other stuff. So, you know, it was interesting. And then also, the, the times when he would have the blackouts, and then when you come back to him, he would be standing there, and there'd be these, like, these, these fellas lying on the ground, with him, and he'd have and there'd be blood on him, and he wouldn't know what was going on, and he kept hearing this voice in his head. You were, you were interested and wondering what the hell was going to happen next. You wanted to know. Clearly, he had some kind of other life he didn't know about. You, you, you saw that, and you, you wanted to get what, 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 what this was actually going on with him. We also got introduced to, to, to Harrow, right? Um, Arthur Harrow, he, he, lead this, he leads this cult who worships some goddess called Amit, who um, judges people, whether they're good or evil, before they've done anything, which is kind of creepy. But you were interested in it. And then when it is, he sent this thing to kill Stephen, and you saw him talk to this man in the mirror who was Mark. And then he changes into the moon and, de and defeats this kind of jackal looking thing. The, 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 the suit didn't look all that bad. So you were interested in season one for this. Right? That's what you were interested in. You were interested in you know, season one in episode one for this. Now you reach the episode two. And you get to find out that, you know, he has... um. Uh, split personality disorder and he has another personality called Mark Specter and then you get to and then, then you get to meet Mark's wife Layla and she comes in and you know of course we start the whole thing and she's beating up people and and, and Stephen is running along there not knowing what's going on and you know she has to be all alpha female and he's or all this someone and the other but then eventually um, Mark takes over someone's the suit defeat some of the other stuff and you know you get to find out what's going on you also get introduced to Konshu who is supposed to be this ancient Egyptian god with a kind of skull like face thing kind of some kind of bird or something like that and he's kind of a jackass that's the other truth about it he's kind of a jackass but by the second episode now you're kind of like okay a little less interested than what happened in the first episode but Still, let me see what's going to happen. Then we get to episode 3. And honestly, episode 3 is where I should have dropped this, this series. I really should have dropped this series by episode 3. But I persevered. So, we get to episode 3 you now. We start to see some of the ridiculousness of what's going on. Right? This whole thing between... This whole love between Mark and Layla is very very dull you don't see any kind of chemistry between the two of them at all they, they could kind of feel like they're forcing it most of the time and even though mark's suit allows bullets to bounce off of him somehow wooden wooden poles could penetrate the suit and stab him i, I, I know you think it's probably some magical stick or something no no it's just a stick that some fella called anton something whatever use it or some some stuff and they started stabbing with it and you're like wait now but how exactly does this even make sense 
And not to mention, before all of that, you have this part where all the time you've been building up to the fact that Mark is this badass mercenary who could take out so many people efficiently and skillfully. And when you do get Mark in control of the body now, he's literally getting the shit beat. No, I mean, he like throws two, three punches and then he gets knocked down, slam up. And, and it's like, and then, and, and then of course, they hint at the fact that there's a third personality in the body that, that, that is even more violent than, than Mark and has done on killing people. Or we never understand what the hell is going on with it. And what not. And then you see, Konshu now, through Mark, tries to inform the other Egyptian gods that um, Haro is working to release Amit and cause destruction across the world, and they don't believe him. I mean, like, so you already trying to tell me you that stupid because Konshu had to literally cause an eclipse to bring the gods together. And you're all really that stupid to believe that he's going to do all of this and accuse a man of trying to bring about Armageddon. A man who you all found in the desert digging, who has who's leading a cult, killing people and doing some questionable shit. And you're all telling me that you're just going to believe that, oh no, oh no, Kunch was just making it up. And this man is completely innocent. And then to top it off, they end up imprisoning Konshu, leaving Harrow to go about doing whatever the hell he wants to do. Fast forward to the um, to episode four now. In episode four, we see um, Layla and Steven slash Mark over the hell is at this point. They tracking down what's going on with, with what's happening with all of this. And, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that... Okay, let me just, let me just break down this, this fourth episode really simply for you. Harrow shoots Mark and kills him. He shoots him and kills him. And next thing when Mark when Mark dies, he ends up inside the psychiatric hospital where Harrow is his doctor. So you know it's some kind of mental flammagas nonsense or whatever. I mean, by this point, I had pretty much checked out of this series. I was like, it just seems to be going through this ridiculous bad portrayal of something that, that that should have been interesting but isn't so i was just completely and utterly uninterested in it but then at the end now mark meets steven because appara apparently they inside some kind of mental system whatever so the two of them meet up and then as they're going towards this thing this door opens and this female hippopotamus head woman walks um comes out and she's there like, hello, and then start to scream. And now I'm interested again because I'm like, okay, who is this hippopotamus woman? I, I really want to know. So we go to episode five and the hippopotamus woman is revealed to be the Egyptian goddess Tawet or something. So she explains that um, Mark and, and Stephen are dead and the psychiatric hospital is a boat sailing to the um, Egyptian afterlife and she has to weigh their hearts on the scales of justice and all kind of thing. Now, this episode was a waste of everything because what we find out in this episode, we go through this long, drawn-out backstory about Mark life, right? We find out that Mark had a younger brother. They went to play in this cave. The cave ended up flooding and the brother died. His mother then went on this binge. She accused him of killing his brother she she said that she said that he always hated him. She started drinking and started 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 to ignore Mark and she would beat him whenever she get the chance. So he created the persona of Stephen, which was pretty which was pretty easy to understand that you know Stephen was the was the created personality. I mean Stephen kind of thought he wasn't, but I could tell from the beginning because Mark was the only one that really had a had any kind of life otherwise. He had um. He had a wife, he had he been a soldier, he's a mercenary, all this kind of stuff now. But here's the thing. The way that they interpret split personality in this story is very confusing because Mark created Stephen to not have the bad memories that Mark was having from his mother and his life and everything. Instead of creating a persona to protect himself from his, this, this persona was created to live a happy life without him. Makes no sense. I mean, like I said, this episode felt like a total waste because rather than you could have had 
uh, uh, this episode where you know they had gone through this journey to do something of importance no no they are not going through this thing mark ends up in the uh mark, mark, um stephen ends up falling off the boat stuck in the sands and turns to the thing and mark ends up going to to paradise in the afterlife whatever okay we go on to episode six now, the final episode, where they, where they pretty much decide to just cram everything into this final episode and have it make no sense. Mark decides to leave the afterlife, goes back to the sands, gets Stephen, goes back to, to, to goes back to being a, go back, back to being alive, I guess. And meanwhile, Harrow finds the the, 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 the the tomb of um of of this goddess. Right, he goes back to the place where, 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 where all the Egyptian gods' avatars are, kills all of them so the gods can't intervene. Right, um, Layla, who's sneaking around there, one than the other, finds Conchu's um statue thing and releases him. Right, and then they release the goddess, who it turns out is some kind of crocodile looking woman. Layla becomes the um. The, the the avatar to, to the hippopotamus goddess looking woman and she gets some sort of wings and a costume sort of thing you know and then they have this whole stuff where she's fighting and this little she saves this even this little, little girl ask her um you know are you an egyptian superhero and she says yes because you know it's important that we have that so clearly we're going to see her later on even though nobody cared to see to, to see to begin with because most of the fighting thing that happens, you see Moon Knight do a couple cool moves, but mostly they focus in more on Layla, because you know that that's where they're leading to. So, Crocodile Woman decides to absorb the souls of people around her, and then uh, people in, in Egypt, basically, and then turns into flicking Godzilla. And then she has this giant kaiju fight with... Um, with what, 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 um, this, this thing, Conchu, this giant kaiju fight with Conchu. That, that literally makes no sense. You're not even sure what the hell is going on. Then you have Moon Knight and Haro having their fight with Layla coming in, and you know, they're all back down and this other and the other. And then, right as Haro is, has, um, has Moon Knight pinned to the ground there and ready to deliver the final blow, he has some kind of fugue moment. And, and when he comes back, Harold's pretty much beaten to a shit and he's there. So again, we get, a, get, get another hint of the third personality. They end up resealing goddess, um, you know, Godzilla looking woman, right? Um, Har um, Konshu wants him to execute Harrow, but he doesn't want to, he refuses to do that. And then next thing you know, um, Stephen and Mark find themselves back in the hospital, the same psychiatric hospital, and then they end up rejected and, and, and they wake up in their bed. So you're not even sure what the hell is going on, but they kind of share the body equally and whatnot. And then to, to the end now, in the mid-credits scene now, um, um, you see Harrow in this, in this hospital. Somebody comes in, takes him out, puts him inside, a, inside, a limo, inside of this limo, conchus in there. And it turns out the third personality of uh, Mark is this Jake Lockley who kills Harrow. And that's pretty much it. The series is a confused mess that kind of runs through this whole thing of pretending like they, 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 they like pretending like, like, like they're somehow deeply di diving into mental illness, some one and the other. It doesn't make sense. They spent a lot, lot of the time portraying Layla as some superhero, which they finally do in the end, which nobody really cared to see. Very little things you could see, you could say anything cool Moon Knight actually did. Again, as I would say, Oscar Isaac's performance as Stephen Grant was not bad. It was not bad. I can't say the same for Mark Spector, because I find as Mark Spector, he was kind of a waste of space. But as Stephen Grant, it wasn't bad, but not enough to save this series this this could have been better had they i think maybe if they just stuck to not going the mental illness route that might have worked but they wanted some kind of you know they're trying to do this kind of humor thing that didn't really pan out but this series is uh this mini series is another another wash they tried to tell this story in six episodes and it, and it didn't work from it didn't work at all 
my final rating on, on Moon Knight, I would give that a 1 out of 5. I don't think you really need to waste your time watching it because I don't think anything in it is of any much any importance to anybody. I literally should have checked out this series by episode 3, but I stayed to, to, to get to the end and I can tell you, waste that time. Not worth it at all. It did not live up to what it needed to be. Period. Well, that's it for me. For this review, let me know in the comments what you think about it. If you have a different thought on this series, please feel free to let me know. If you like the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell. Be notified every time I put out a new video. I, If you could also share the video, that will be very helpful. But I could talk about the, the, the different landscapes and the different things in this movie of the Egyptian landscape and everything and if you really want to see it, it'll be good and all that. Okay, it's fine, but not really. Again, not enough to save this movie.